Hello everyone. Education of women. The Christian missionaries were the first to set up the Calcutta Female Juvenile Society in 1819. The Bethune School founded by J. E. D. Bethune, President of the Council of Education in Calcutta in 1949, was the first fruit of the powerful movement for women's education that arose in the 1840s and 50s. Pandit Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar was associated with no less than 35 girls schools in Bengal and is considered one of the pioneers of women's education. Jagannath Shankar Seth, Nana and Bhav Daji were among the active promoters of girls schools in Maharashtra. Jagannath Nana Shankar Seth was one of the founders of the school society and native school of Bombay. The school changed names a number of times it became the Bombay Native Institution in 1824, in 1840 it became the Board of Education and in 1856 it became the Elphinstone Educational Institution. When Dr. Wilson belonging to the Scottish was unable to get accommodation for a girls school, Nana provided accommodation for the school and even sent the female members of his family to the school in Girguam. In 1856, the British government had announced some grant in aid to private institutions. Nana took advantage of this and started an English Marathi school in Girguam. He contributed funds to the girls' school started by Students' Literary and Scientific Society. Bhav Daji Lord Ram Krishna Lord was another ardent promoter of education. As the first Indian president of the Students' Literary and Scientific Society, he championed the cause of female education and a girls' school was founded in his name. Perhaps the most notable pioneers in promoting the education of women was Jyoti Rao Pole, also called Jyoti Ba Pole, and his wife Savitri Bai. Pole held radical views for the times on the necessity of education for girls. His first gender sensitive act was to encourage his wife Savitri to read and write. Later, impressed by the school for girls run by the American missionaries in Ahmednagar, he and his wife opened the first school for girls at Bidewada, Pune in 1848. Not many were willing to teach in the school given the opposition to girls' education, so Fole and Savitri Bai shared the work of teaching. Savitri Bai could be said to have become the first female school teacher of modern India. She went on to become headmistress and taught alongside her trainee Fatima Sheikh and Jyoti Rao's emancipator aunt Saguna Bai. The Fules went on to open several more schools in and around Pune. Pule also opened night schools for those working during the day and unable to attend regular schools. The school established by the Students Literary and Scientific Society was assisted by European officials but Foley's venture was without help from the authorities. It was an indigenous effort and that too by a non-Brahmin in the face of huge opposition from the orthodox sections of society. The Alexandra Society of Parsis opened in 1863 was aimed at educating, educating Parsi girls. Incidentally, the first woman graduate of Bombay University was a Parsi woman, Cornelia Sorabji, in 1887. She later worked for equal, equal opportunities for women in education. It will be seen that it was largely the private enterprise of Indians themselves that encouraged women's education. After Lord Dalhousie declared that female education must be given Frank and cordial support, Charles Wood's Dispatch on Education 1854 laid great stress, stress on the need for female education. In 1914, the Women's Medical Service did a lot of work in training nurses and midwives. The Indian Women's University set up by the Professor D.K. Carvey in 1916 was one of the outstanding institutions imparting education to women. In the same year, Lady Hardinge Medical College was opened in Delhi. Health facilities began to be provided to women with the opening of Dufferin hospitals in the 1880s. 
participation in the swadeshi and anti participation anti partition and the home rule movements during the opening decades of the 20th century was a major liberating experience for the otherwise home centered indian movement after 1919 they faced lathis and bullets and were jailed during political processions picketing etc they actively participated in trade union and kisan movements or revolutionary movements they voted in stood for and got elected to various legislatures and local bodies sarojini naidu went on to become the president of the indian national congress 1925 and later the governor of united provinces 1947 to 49 after 1920 aware and self confident women led a women's movement many organizations and institutions such as the all india women's conference established in 1927 came up like share and subscribe to support the channel thank you bye